What is your biggest disappointment in Jujutsu Gaisen recently? JJK has had a legendary run ever since the beginning, and even until now, the series is still one of the best as well as one of the most popular, outclassing every other series in terms of sales at the moment. But I would be lying if I denied the fact that, especially recently, there have been a lot of disappointing moments regarding the series. In this video, we are going to talk about the biggest disappointment in recent JJK. This is by no means me hating on the series, of course, and a lot of those moments have ways to explain them. It doesn't stop us from saying why is bothering or what could have been better if you enjoyed this video leave a like and subscribe but only if you enjoy for this video let's try to reach 200 likes let's get into it the first event i want to talk about is related to gojo's death no matter whether you like him or not as a character gojo's death in itself wasn't a problem and his conclusion was nothing but fantastic but the fact that his death was so stood and end off screen makes the moment feel a little bit off for those of y'all that know me you would already know that i believe that chapter 235 was one of the best chapters in the series of course i simply wanted gojo to win but i would have been fine with any outcome but it's the fact that every event in 235 was so beautifully executed everything until the end with gojo defeating sukuna the chapter alone having some of the best moments in the whole series with a conclusion that nobody expected to then start the next chapter with gojo who has already been cut the way a lot of people felt about this moment is that gojo was so strong that they had to kill him off screen because there was no good way to show his death on screen i used to find this idea stupid until recently where i'm starting to understand it a little bit. Obviously Sukuna is stronger than Gojo, but what I'm trying to understand is how did Gojo die? We still don't know any of the circumstances of his death, but the only two that make sense would be number one, Gojo being off guard, or the second one being that the slash is way too fast. This missing context makes everything about the end of the fight so confusing. I just don't feel like it is in character for Gojo to be off guard against somebody like Sukuna. If somebody was to know how malicious and resourceful Sukuna was, it would be Gojo. There would be no way for him to just stand there and let it happen. Happen, which led me to believe that Sukuna's reality slash is an attack that is simply too fast. Basically, by extending the target, Sukuna can cut everything at once, meaning that the slash was instant. By the time Gojo got hit, it was already in two pieces, meaning that it was too late for him to heal. That would be a pretty good explanation for why Gojo couldn't heal from it. The problem here is that Kashimo proceeds to dodge it in the next two chapters. This means that the attack travels. Even though Gojo cannot see it, we've seen at the beginning of the fight. Gojo can sense it coming his way for the simple fact that he will feel a disturbance in the energy in the air. Of course this wasn't directly confirmed but there will only be one reason for him to make this face right here. It would be because he senses something coming but doesn't know what it is, which wouldn't be impossible to do with the six eyes. Let's go a step further, assuming that he doesn't see or sense the slash coming. Gojo has been hitting black flashes. All they had to do was never mention that his output was back, but they told us that his full output was almost back. And this means that using reverse curse technique while being cut would have been something possible. And yet he didn't do that either. So the simple fact that Kashi react to it does mean that it wasn't too fast meaning that gojo had to be off guard which is still very annoying and doesn't make too much sense to me because that would mean that gojo is dumb enough to underestimate sukuna no matter how the situation looks gojo knows that sukuna is stronger than him and even thought about losing in the middle of the fight so the next possibility would have been for something to distract them like sukuna using megumi's face to distract him for a second something along those lines that is actually something i would be fine with because as i said before sukuna will use any methods that he needs to win it's like he did against angel nothing is stopping him from doing it against gojo as well but this adds on to the reason why i think everything should have been on screen because taking every single factor in consideration it is just impossible to know what happened so i really hope to see it in the flashback in a future chapter the last thing i want to talk about regarding this topic is people saying that gege has been off screening characters for the longest which is just wrong first we have jogo it is true that we didn't exactly see him die but it doesn't take a brain to understand that he got shot by sukuna arrow and die on the spot. We've seen Nobara get touched by Mahito. Even if we didn't get the confirmation of her death on screen, if she's dead, we still know what is the exact cause of it. And the last one is Kashimo. If he's dead, we've already seen the slash net. We already know the cause of his death. Gojo went from I'm winning to I'm already dead. Which is why this off screen is crazy. I'm not saying that they need to show everything. It is just one of those important moments that would have made sense to see. But that's it for the Gojo case. Now we need to talk about Yorozu's gift, the Kamuto. Okay. But before we get into it, I have an announcement for you. If you're looking for some good quality clothing at a good price, look no further than Anime Express. Whether you're looking for comfort or style, they would have everything you need. Literally everything from all of your favorite series. Of course, they have Jujutsu Kaisen, but they also have a multitude of other series.
series and on top of base including they have all sorts of accessories whether it is for you or simply to decorate your house things such as bonnets rings lights or whatever you would want if you want to support my channel or simply get some good clothing for yourself go over at anime express that store and before your purchase don't forget to use code godly omen 10 for 10 percent off hopefully you find something for you and thanks to anime express for sponsoring this video but now it's time to talk about my biggest disappointment Yorozu's gift is one of the worst things in the series and i will stand by that right before dying Yorozu made a binding vow with her life to give a gift to sukuna at first we ignored what it was but we thought it was going to be something that would be useful in this fight against gojo or something that happens later on with everybody in the community looking forward to it expecting it to be good theorizing about what it could be it ends up being revealed in his fight against kashimo Yorozu made a replica of one of sukuna's old weapon but right when you think that this is about to be interesting the tool just serves no purpose for the rest of the series sukuna first starts by shooting lightning on kashimo which doesn't hurt him in the slightest for the simple reason that he has affinity to lightning but that's not really something he can control so you can blame him for that but now after defeating kashimo it would be the perfect time for him to use it against somebody higuruma uses his deadly sentencing but the confiscation goes to the tool instead of going to Sukuna's curse technique. I've seen people explaining how that makes sense and I don't have any problem with that specifically. My problem is this tool was just a useless plot device. This tool that we was going to see later that was going to help Sukuna in so many ways. This gift that seemed so precious was just a plot device so Sukuna can keep his curse technique. And as much as people would try to explain it more and more I'd still hate it. Not even saying that Sukuna has blood armor I generally just wanted him to use the tool. Deadly sentencing stealing Sukuna's curse technique instead of the two would have still made perfect sense number one because it was the explanation that we were given before and number two shrine was the weapon used to commit that crime the kamutoke had no form of involvement in shibuya's massacre meaning that there were so many ways to explain why sukuna would lose his technique instead of the two yet this is the route that gege chose just telling us that this gift had only one purpose serve as an armor for sukuna against iguruma's domain the more i think about it and the more i talk about it and the more mad i get because this is just just dumb to me people saying that it doesn't make any difference and sukuna would have been doing the same thing exactly that is not my problem sukuna would have been winning regardless even without using his curse technique he can literally just run at everybody and impale every single one i know that it doesn't make a difference which is the exact reason why it annoys me even more even if it comes back it already served as a plot device but i guess we would still get to see what it's good for but taking in consideration the way sukuna was speaking in the last chapter i think it is fair to assume that the tool is not coming back either at this point i don't even know why so many people are mad at the fact that sukuna get killed the king of convenience it is fine if you can explain everything that happened it is still very convenient convenient whether you like it or not i'm not going to use that as a way to disrespect sukuna he's still one of my favorite characters and it is fine if he is lucky i feel like people just need to be more honest with themselves instead of blindly following something kashimo and gojo are my favorite characters and i could talk to you for an hour about what's disappointing about them what you could complain about regarding them what you could meme about and the same treatment i give everybody else is the same treatment i'm going to give sukuna sukuna is the luckiest character in the series he's luckier than akari the more i look at it and the more i think about it like this i don't think that hakari is necessarily that lucky i think the domain is just rigged meaning that no matter what happens he's going to get what he needs regardless but you can really let me know how you feel about it who is luckier sukuna or hakari another one of my biggest disappointments is kashimo as much as i love him i expected much more from the character but i already have a video where i talk about his character at length talking about everything that's great and everything that could have been better about him and for the last case we're going to talk about kenjaku's death now i already explained before why yuta did not wrong and i still stand by that belief yuta got the job done by getting rid of kenjaku the build-up was long and annoying but in the end it paid off and the moment with yuta was so beautiful i feel like kenjaku's death makes sense and that they made the right call by backstabbing him this doesn't change the fact that it would have been cool to see more from him despite how much was shown to us there's still so much that we don't know about him like we don't even know if he is originally a man or a woman kenjaku is still one of the biggest mysteries we don't know how he grew up what made him become this much of a villain because i refuse to believe that he was already bored in his first life the reason why he is the way he is right now is because he lived for so long he has nothing else to care for which is why him dying at any time made sense because his character is kind of already done this means that my problem regarding 
regarding the situation could be fixed in the future. It would be great to see more about him and Kashimo in the Edo era because we know they met before when Kashimo was younger. We could see how things went between him and Sukuna in the Heian era or even how he grew up in his own time period. Going over how his mindset evolved over the centuries and just more character related stuff to be honest. But in the end, every single one of my complaints regarding all of these events could be fixed in the future. Except the Kamutoke one, this was just a big waste. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe and I will see y'all next time. Peace.